just want to say a massive thank you uh, to joining us tonight. Obviously, it's a big commitment for all of you that are coming to the game tomorrow and then obviously asking you to join us tonight as well. So I really appreciate that. But as, um, as I'm sure you'll be aware and what's really important, I think this is arguably the most important point of the process, is really to get a good understanding of how you know the process of going out to America on a scholarship works, how we help our athletes to get the best possible scholarship out in America, um, and then obviously what you can expect from there and beyond. Um, as I said, and, and for those of you that joined a bit late, really lucky to be joined as well by Ellie tonight. So Ellie heads up our women's soccer, uh, recently joined the program too, um, and Ellie's gonna talk to you all a bit about her own experience as being out in America as one of our clients, um, and then obviously talking about her role now as well. Worth mentioning, and sorry that I keep moving stuff on the screen, I've just moved you up to the top now, but you'll see you've got a nice uh, picture there of Ellie, but also on the right hand side, you've got a picture of Matt Bentley. And um, before we get into kind of the core of um, the process, it's worth mentioning with Matt, he actually attended one of our soccer trial games at AFC Sudbury in 2016 and then this year got drafted into Major League Soccer with Minnesota United. So he's a prime example of somebody who has obviously done incredibly well, both um, as, a, as a soccer player, but also academically as well. So Matt won't mind me saying to all of you here right now is that when he came and trialed with us in 2016, I would not have predicted that he'd have gone on to achieve what he has on the pitch or got drafted, um, now has an agent, you know, as a professional footballer. He had a lot of raw talent. However, what I would say with Matt is he's somebody who really benefited from being in an American college system where you've got the top physios and fitness and nutrition and athletics program and training and coaching, everything about that and being able to practice um, at his talent every single day over four years has ended up with him developing into the player that he is today. So prime example, and, and often, as you can imagine, we do get the question, well, can I go on to become a professional at the end of it? The answer to that is yes, it's very, very, very difficult. And obviously the margins are small of those that do make it. But Matt is a prime example of somebody, if you take this opportunity and that's what you want to work towards, as you can see, it is something that's very much achievable. At this point, um, before we move into the presentation, I always have to plug the social media channels because it makes marketing very happy. So make sure you are following us on all social channels. But the main thing for it is following us means you get the latest updates in terms of what's going on with American College Soccer also any updates about future trial events. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, things like tomorrow's game will be uploaded onto YouTube. So I'm sure um, if any of you score a worldie tomorrow or have a particularly good game, you'll wanna be re-watching that back. So uh, make sure you subscribe to those channels. Now, let me get started into the presentation. I'm just gonna move you, everyone to the bottom. So there's nowhere else really that we can start than the impact of COVID and coronavirus right now. The fact that we're all here right now um, on Zoom having this presentation and call highlights the impact that COVID has had. This is the first ever presentation that we've been delivering for a trial game on Zoom or online, something that we'd have never imagined doing. However, obviously, not only ourselves as a business, but everyone has had to adapt to these, you know, really challenging times. And super grateful that we're able to be back in action tomorrow with a trial event, albeit different to what we'd normally have. Now, again, uh, apologies for the spam of emails, but just wanted to make sure everyone was informed as, you know, as possible going into tomorrow's event, and just to quickly run through what that impact is. So, we want everyone to get there tomorrow, ideally for 8.45, realise there can be some issues. The reason why it's 8.45 is we want everyone there for nine o'clock. One of my colleagues will be there taking temperature, not only of yourself if you're playing, but anyone who's spectating too. We'll then tick you off on the register. You will be assigned your shirt for the game. Obviously, last reminder of it, but please bring your own shorts and socks, preferably dark for the game because Sudbury um, have a policy of only being able to share the shirts, which is absolutely fine. At that point, obviously a lot of you will have heard a lot about the information tonight via this seminar, but I will be doing a 10 to 15 minute chat just to go high level over some of the stuff that we've discussed tonight, um, as well as kind of discussing the format of the game and thereafter. At that point, Ellie and myself will be taking a team each, it's not competitive, but my team does always win. 
Um, but then I am picking the teams as well, so that might be an impact. Um, I'll give myself more subs so we've got more energy. But what we'll do is we'll give you a quick warm up each. Um, and then as I said, the game will be professionally filmed. It'll be 120 minutes, uh, maybe more, depending on if anyone's got any energy. The reason for that is because we are expecting over 30 players, um, as you can imagine, four periods of 30, trying to rotate everyone so you get enough time to impress in your preferred position. But hopefully you'll all be understanding that, you know, if you're a DM, but you might have to play slightly more advanced, for example, then, you know, that's the case. But again, don't put pressure on tomorrow's game because, you know, that main thing for us, particularly for the guys who are new to the process, um, aren't already a signed athlete, is just to have a, you know, an initial view of you as a player get to see other players already signed up to the process and what standard you need to be. And for those athletes that are already signed for us, you know, we can then film you play for your club team. So it's not like my actual experience was I went to a trial game and that was my footage. So I don't even think I had the best game, but um, I do remember scoring, but that was it. That was it. You know, if I had a bad game or one lad on our team broke his leg, actually. So, you know, that's your one shot saloon. So don't worry. That is not the case um, with us. We'll continue to film you until we're happy with that. Now, I don't want to bore you too much about the state of play in America, but I thought it'd be worthwhile um, just giving a high level overview of what has been happening in the last few months and the impact of COVID on college sports in America. Now, our student athletes can now fly out to America um, to go back to college. Some of them are having to quarantine for 14 days. Some of them aren't. Some of them are just getting tested. Now, for those of you that followed the news on this, you'll have seen that Donald Trump um, crazily came out and basically said student athletes aren't on the list of people that can come back into the country. And obviously the college system is heavily dependent on international students and international student athletes. Now, within three days of Trump making this announcement, Google, Apple, Harvard, MIT, basically all the big tech firms and colleges threatened to sue the US government because essentially they're going to lose out on a ton of money in scholarship. But also, as you can imagine, the top universities want their top athletes as well. So they then made a U-turn on that decision and I'll reserve judgment or comment on Donald Trump because that could be a whole nother seminar about his kind of policies on things. But yeah, he then made a U-turn, surprisingly, when they started to get all that negative um, press around that, which meant that student athletes could then, you know, come into the country. As a result, the US Embassy then started um, accepting appointments in London, which obviously was great. But as you can imagine, a backlog of four months of students, um, all trying to get fast track so they can get out to America for this August. It wasn't the easiest for a lot of our athletes, but Thankfully, most of our athletes now that are looking to go out to 2020 are either already back out in the States, are choosing to stay in the UK until January because they've got the option to, or are going out in the next few days. Now, the reason, and to go back to the Trump thing, it wasn't just that student athlete, if your school um, wasn't employing full-time classes, you therefore weren't a full-time student, therefore you couldn't get a full-time student athlete visa. Now, on the back end of that, as you can imagine, you need entrance exams, which I will hopefully not scare you about um, in a little while, that you need to go to a four-year university. You do need to take an entrance exam. Again, they were closed. Important thing for anyone who's listening right now for our signed athletes is that if you need to do the SAT still, I think it's the one in October that's next. The deadline is September 4th. So I will definitely be reminding you all about that tomorrow as well, because you need to act quick on that because currently there is no November SAT. So therefore the next one would be December. And as you can imagine, the longer you leave it, there's impacts on how attractive you are as an athlete um, if you haven't already got your SAT exam. Again, without confusing you at this early stage, if you're looking to go to community college, you don't need to necessarily sit an entrance exam. And also there is an alternative to the SAT called the ACT. Now, how does this all impact full sports um, for this August? As you can imagine, a lot of the seasons have been cancelled. There are still some conferences that are maybe going to have five, six games. But the impact on that is their senior players who would have looked to play and graduate now have been wavered their eligibility for this season. So, for example, I could play in those six games this season as a senior and I will still have a year's eligibility left. Now, some students might still want to graduate on time and leave. For other athletes, it might mean that they want to stay for another year, play another season. 
therefore it will have a knock-on effect on recruitment to a certain extent because if I needed a forward for next year all of a sudden my forward isn't leaving he's going to stay for another year then that is less um, you know potential recruits for those positions um, a lot of sports have therefore moved this season to spring so it's not even like those athletes would have to wait a whole year to play that last season they could just play it in spring no doubt you have questions around that as well but hopefully that's just a quick update on the state of play for everything there. Okay, so why would you even wanna to go to America um, is obviously one of the most important places to start. Um, a lot of you will have either done research on this, I'm sure you'll even know somebody that's already been out to America on a scholarship, or you yourself are already signed up to the process and fully aware of everything. I don't think a lot of people coming into this appreciate kind of the scale of it. We know that America is a big place, but we probably underestimate that there are thousands of colleges to pick from. And when I'm talking about colleges, I use colleges and universities um, synonymously. So they mean essentially the same thing. If I'm talking about a community college, that would be a two year, not a four year school. Now, as you can see on this slide, over 600 unis offered international athletes over $20,000 in scholarship for last year. Now that can even go up a lot higher than that and obviously some lower because it's the average. But as you can see, it's big business college sports out there. Again, I'm sure if you're interested in, in this process already, you'll have seen March Madness for basketball, you'll have seen games on ESPN, you'll have seen how big college sports can be, particularly with most, um, with a lot of sports drafting players into their professional leagues, it really is big business. And effectively at college, you could be playing against the next, you know, the next future professional in Major League Soccer, for example. Um, Often a question that we'll get regarding the academics is how, you know, how reputable is my degree going to be from America if I choose to come back to the UK afterwards, for example. You've only got to look at, say, the top 20 universities ranked in the world on most lists and, and typically 12 to 14 of those will be American ones. And, and just to come into mind, obviously, Harvard, Yale, Stanford, University of Chicago, all universities like that are up there with the best in the world. So... Yes, when you've got thousands of colleges and universities, that is going to vary. Um, you know, you obviously you've got Cambridge and Oxford in the UK, for example, have got a better reputation than maybe smaller or more local universities. Um, I've already touched on it there, but, you know, college sport is so big. And I kind of knew that going into America when I went out there, but still underestimated how big it is. What you've got to remember is, say, for example, you're at a university that's got 100,000 people the whole life on campus pretty much revolves around sports. So if you're, you know, you're playing for soccer and that soccer game's on at a night, you can expect the majority of the campus and athletes to be there supporting the team. Um, there's a lot of pride and camaraderie around all of the college sports, so it's absolutely huge. For me, being from Suffolk, obviously the trial's in Suffolk tomorrow. I'd never been to America before I moved to Chicago. And again, I'll bore you about my story probably today and tomorrow um, and probably beyond that as well. Um, living in the past over here now that I don't play anymore. But I got the opportunity to live in Chicago for four years, which is arguably the best city in the world, um, obviously biased here. But also got to go to over 20 states in four years. Um, all of these experiences were things that I would have never done had I not gone on to America on a sports scholarship. Um, and the big thing for me was, um, and again, when I get to my stories, I managed to graduate completely debt free. So I went to a school that was close to $40,000 a year. So 160K over four years. And I came out completely debt free. Whereas my sister, for example, went to university in London and was still paying off her debt for the next seven, eight years. So financially, it can be an unbelievable opportunity. But even beyond the finances, because just let mum and dad worry about that. That's a joke. Um, is that I was able to train every day. I was able to play at a high level. I was able to get a degree. I was able to live independently for four years. You know, everything that went with that experience and hopefully you'll get from this presentation tonight was just absolutely life-changing for me. Um, but yeah, obviously the fact that you get it cheap or debt-free is, is a massive bonus to that as well. So what I'm gonna talk very quickly over here is the different divisions. And again, if you're interested in America, you'll probably be familiar with these anyway. When a lot of people talk about college sports, the first government governing body they'll think of is the NCAA. And I'm sure most of you will have heard of NCAA Division One. Probably not familiar that there is Division 2 and Division 3 as well. Now, again, we can go into detail tomorrow, but Division 3 do not give 
athletic scholarship. So basically you're reliant on academic scholarship. As a result, we don't send as many athletes there because obviously you have to be very good academically to make it work financially unless you're willing to contribute a lot to those costs. But NCAA Division I and Division II both give athletic and academic scholarship, which can come in a variety of different formats for that. Um, as you can see, there's over 1,200 soccer NCAA teams. So there's a huge choice within NCAA. Um, over, you know, there's 24 sports. There's almost half a million athletes. So again, you're seeing the scale of how popular and big it is, but also how competitive it is for places as well. Because as you can imagine, if I'm a talented soccer player going through high school in America, probably the minute I hit high school, I'm already thinking, I want to work hard so I can get to X university or get X offers. So for internationals, I think everyone on the call tonight is from the UK, is that to come in maybe even a year and a half or, or two years in advance is arguably later to the process where you're then competing for those places with athletes that have already had it in mind for another three years before you ever thought about it. So that's why we'll always say that once somebody has decided they want to go ahead with the process, the earlier they sign up, the, the, the major benefit is that more scholarships are available because as you can imagine, the top universities will know who the best players in the country are when they're 14, 15, 16. So if you're 18, 19, as you can imagine, again, the benefits of signing earlier is that you can get on that radar before they commit to another player. Um, grade point average. So that's when we just look at what you've got at high school and college and we make an equivalent of say, for example, an A is a four. So the highest you could get on a grade point average is a four. Um, and then a B is a three, a C is a two. That's the most simplistic way to think of it. To play at an NCAA school, you need a grade point average above a 2.3. Um, and, and that's pretty standard across the board. So you need to be getting above a C grade average. But again, if you haven't got that, do not panic because it's not a direct correlation um, between a UK grade and an American grade. And then also there's the community college route, which we'll talk about. Um, with the SAT and the ACT, the entrance exams, the minimum that you need to get on those exams is on a sliding scale for NCAA. And I think it's kind of stupid, but the, the better the grades you've got, the worse you can do on the on the entrance exam which I never thought really tied up because if you're super academic you're probably going to do well on the entrance exam as well um, so that's NCAA again any questions put it in the message and I'll either pick it up now or at the end moving on to NAIA that is also four-year institutions so um, the smaller institutions typically there's over 250 schools within NAIA Ellie, who will tell you about her experiences shortly, played NCAA D2 at Davis and Elkins. I played NAIA at Illinois Institute of Technology, who are actually now an NCAA school. So they actually changed uh, regulatory bodies. Now, a lot of people, because NAIA isn't as well known as NCAA, will instantly dismiss the idea of going to an NAIA school. But I may be biased, but I'm definitely proof that the standard can be just as good um, and the level of play can be just as good. We played a lot of D1, D2, NCAA play, uh, teams out of season and beat them. Um, it doesn't mean that they're going to be better. And something else to touch on is that you cannot get relegated or promoted. So the best team in NCAA D2 will probably be able to beat the majority of teams in NCAA D1. And a lot of people struggle to get that round ahead. But as you can imagine, a university doesn't get division status based on how good their men's soccer team is. Same as you wouldn't expect it for their lacrosse team or their netball team. You know, there can be a variety in that. Yes, bigger NCAA D1 programs have more money or bigger campus, bigger, as I said, revenue coming through the school. So typically will have better teams because they can invest in it. But that doesn't mean that's the case. Um, the thing with NAIA as well is because typically smaller rosters. So as you can see, the size of athletes around 60,000, but there's 25,000 scholarships. So actually the chance of you getting a higher scholarship is statistically better in NAIA and and Ellie can you speak right now are you muted no hi hi how many were in your roster when you're at Davis and Elkins um in the team you mean yeah anywhere between like 20 and yeah about 2025 depending okay cool I mean that's still 
depending yeah yeah that's relatively not small but fairly average at d1 programs it wouldn't be unusual to see 50 players if they've got a junior varsity as well we had about 18 players on our roster yet 12 of us were on full tuition scholarships so that's where the difference can be is that smaller squad but more scholarship i'm not great at math but that normally equals better opportunity of more scholarship so essentially i'm not here to plug the naia i'm not here to not plug the ncaa i'm here to say that there are thousands of schools and our aim is to help find the best school for you or your child based on their academics, their athletic capability, and most importantly, arguably for the parents, is what financial contributions you've got to make to that. Yes, I came out debt free, but I was still having to contribute money towards that experience, which again, I'll get to shortly. Now, if we park those two and move on to the third column on the right, NJCAA, and they love an acronym just to confuse you further, is that is what's known as junior colleges or community colleges. Now, community colleges typically is where an athlete would look to go if they're not the most academic in the world. It doesn't mean you're not a good athlete or it doesn't mean the level of play isn't going to be as good. There are still players that go on to become professional from playing in community colleges. A good example of that, someone local to here um, and the trial we're at tomorrow is Don Dwyer. Um, if you don't know who he is, have a look online, but he was from the Norwich um, and Norfolk area, got released by Norwich at 15, went to Kings Lynn, didn't get offered anything there, went out to Tyler Community College because his academics weren't great, did two years there, transferred to an NCAA D1 program, South Florida, did amazingly well for two years there, got drafted into Major League Soccer, has gone on to become I think top 10 high, high scorers in the MLS ever. Um, and then crazily enough, married Sydney LaRue, who plays for the women's soccer team, got American citizenship, and then three years ago actually played for America and scored on his debut. So that is probably the best success story I think I've ever heard from this process. But he's gone from playing at a community college because he didn't have the academics to go to a four-year school to actually playing for America. Um, so again, it's just what you make of the opportunities that put in front of you. But again, it highlights what an amazing opportunity this is to open up doors that you would have never had. Someone who's not good enough to play for Kings Lynn um, is somebody who's gone on to be one of the most successful professionals in the American game. Um, so back to NJCAA, you would go there for two years, you would get your diploma. And then if you're one of our signed athletes, we then help you transfer to either an NCAA or NAIA school and you would complete your final two years there. Most university degrees out there are four years, so that's still four years total. It's not two and then another four, it is still four years. And the degree that you get comes from where you graduate. So if I did two at Tyler, and then I did two at Davis and Elkins, my degree still comes from Davis and Elkins. Now, the benefit to that is, Community colleges are a lot cheaper. As you can imagine, if you said like a local uni to an Oxford and Cambridge, Oxford and Cambridge is going to be more expensive. Yeah, they cap tuition here, but everything, you, if you factor in housing costs and living as well, it's going to be more expensive. It's the same out there as well. So it's not unusual for a community college for your tuition, your food and housing to be $10,000 without scholarship. Um, so as you can imagine, if you start factoring in scholarship to that, you could be at a community college paying three, four thousand dollars a year for everything, so like three thousand pounds, and then you've got opportunities to make money out there, which we'll get to, like working on campus, where you might have no cost at all. You might break even on that. So again, even for players who maybe aren't terribly academically, are fairly good at it, they might still choose community college because it gets them used to the college system, gets them playing and noticed for two years, get their grades up then they might go on a really good scholarship at a four-year school. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helped clear up about the colleges and divisions. Again, welcome any questions we've got at the end. I'll also talk a bit about it tomorrow. This next slide, don't worry, I will go over it very quickly because no one wants to talk about entrance exams and exams, particularly on a Thursday evening. But as I said, if you want to go to an NCAA or NAIA school, you are going to have to take an entrance exam. And these are the two options, SAT, ACT. I personally don't have a massive preference as a company. We've always pushed the SAT because most of our athletes have done that. Um, the, S the ACT is meant to be a more standardized version for European students. However, both are gonna be accepted by every university. Um, as I said, with the SAT, there are 
test dates pretty much monthly at the minute minus November because of the backlog. If not, there's usually six test dates throughout the year. Um, the benefit to sign in earlier is, as I said, if I'm circulating Ellie as a player and I say, here's her video, here's all her grades, the coach will go, may go, that's great. But because our academic scholarship could be influenced by her SAT, can you get back to me once she's got that? So therefore, you might slow yourself down a month or two months. And in that time, they might have actually filled that position. Um, but also recognize that a lot of you will have exams or studying for other things or other commitments. You want to make sure you've got enough time to really prepare for that. Now, some universities might not actually care what you get as long as you get more than the minimum. So we talked about the sliding scale. Um, and also, I mean, if you see there, it's out of 1600, um, the SAT, the score that you typically need to get on there is um, 930. We, we typically say around 930 to 950 is going to be good enough. Um, but that's to play at any university. Obviously, some universities, particularly like Ivy League schools, if you want to go to a Harvard, you better be getting you know, over 1,400 out of 1,600. So again, each school can have different variances. Now, before you start to worry about this exam, it's worth mentioning that every single student athlete at a four-year school will have had to take this and pass this. So they're not going to make it ridiculously hard so no one can pass. However, it's like anything in life, the more you put in, and you know prepare and study there's no coincidence that you're going to get the better scores now i'm going to get to it shortly but we've also got an athletes area on our site that provides practice exams videos and we're also partnered with a sat tutor that can give free tuition to our athletes as well so again we're there to provide you all the support that you need to make sure you do well because as i said it can factor into be an important part of what your scholarship looks like we had a female athlete last year i think she got 1200 the school came back to her and said, look, if you get 1250, we can actually give you um, like 10,000 extra per year. Sorry, I'm just wary that um, a, that we've got a chat, um, but also just wary in case anybody, yeah, I, I was better at this last time in recognizing if people are actually waiting to come in as well. Um, so let me just, I don't know if I can remove that now. Cool. Sorry, back to where we were. Um, so yeah, it can be an important part of how your academic scholarship. She then, they said, if you get 1250, we can give you three grand extra a year academic scholarship. So 12,000 over four years. So she wasn't too keen on it, but mum and dad said, yes, you are taking it. And she did get the 1250 that she needed. And essentially that saved her $12,000 over four years in um, fees to the school. So it can be a big part of it. For me personally, I didn't get any academic scholarship from passing the SAT. Elliot, I can't even remember, was yours a case of that? Um, no, I think mine was covered um, athletic, but I do remember like it made a difference. Like the schools did ask, you know. Yeah. It, I think it helps them as well just to kind of add because a lot of it's overall, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. So. Just us as a company, obviously most of you already know who we are or a bit about us, but just to kind of give you a brief overview um, to make sure you're on the right seminar if you're in this far. But, um, you know, we're a sports scholarship recruitment and consultancy company. We've been doing it over 10 years now, probably one of, if not the longest established in the industry. We work with thousands of universities, as I've already said. We've secured over $20 million in scholarship for our athletes in that time, successfully placing over 600 um, athletes. One of the main things about us is that we're super selective. So you will see other companies, I'm sure, that have sent more than us or claim to send more than us. But I had a really negative experience using a company, um, not like us, but maybe like one of those where I was one of 300 lads that were signed up to the process um, and very much just a number in the process, didn't get any support at all. Um, so yeah, felt like I kind of had to do the whole process myself, but ironically, the, the company that I went through, they no longer exist, no surprise, but obviously it's led to us being able to start this company ourselves. So what started as three guys who had bad experiences using a specific company has now gone to a company, you know, we're fortunate enough to have over, you know, 50 members of staff working for us in different capacities, all throughout the UK, Ireland, Dubai, and America as well. Obviously Ellie joining us being one of those two um we're experienced in the sense that and as you know i'll bore you further with my experience is that um we've been there and done it you know we i didn't have zoom back then that's for sure but i have sat there through a seminar presentation about america instantly fell in love with the idea and then i guess the rest is history but 
we have been in that process. We've been out to America. We've done the scholarship. We know how it works, um, which I think is massive. Um, you have to have done it yourself as well. Connected, um, as I said, we work with every sports scholarship given university and community college in America. Trusted and respected in the sense that, as you can imagine, when we first started, you know, over 10 years ago, pushing players who didn't know us, then we were having to establish ourselves. But now coaches will ring us up and say, look, I'm looking for, say, a right back next year. I can offer this scholarship. Who you, would you recommend? And because we only offer 25 places on our programme each year, so that's 25 men's soccer, women's soccer, and then throughout the sports, golf, rugby, tennis, athletics, uh, we're able to provide our athletes with all the support and you know the best chance of finding the best possible scholarship. Um, and then the big thing for us is the personal approach too. So as I said, I was never given a designated rep. Um, I had to do all the process myself. In fact, I remember my profile got circulated maybe 30 schools got in contact with me at the time I'm thinking this is brilliant but in hindsight then having to we pretty much just about had dial up into having to research these schools have Skype conversations figure out what's good or not and then you know it was a complete minefield for me I'd, I'd never even heard of an SAT exam and then I'm being asked what my school was so um, we try to be different in that so you'll be given a designated rep some some of you on the call might already be one of my athletes if not you'll be Ellie's or one of our colleagues we have weekly touch points on WhatsApp. Um, we have joint uh, sp spreadsheets for interest and offers and all documentation and the athletes area, which I'll talk about. Um, another big thing for us is being transparent. So if you go to Trustpilot, you can see reviews from players that were already sent. I've already paid them enough, so made sure they're positive. Um, but again, joking aside, that's what we pride ourselves on is providing the best possible service in the industry. And yeah, I'm confident that we do. Oh dear, I forgot I did not take that. I need to update that, but that is me, believe it or not. I don't know how I'm that pasty, given that that was in America, but I couldn't grow a beard either. But there is some evidence that I was out there. So I was at Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago. My background was that I always wanted to be a pro, pro footballer. So I was at Ipswich um, Academy from the eight. I was actually at Norwich for a year before. But as an Ipswich fan, I don't really like to talk about that too much. But from nine till 19, I was at Ipswich, did my scholarship. During my scholarship, four knee operations, got told I can't play again. So it was either go to uni in the UK, like my sister, and getting a lot of debt. Um, or I heard about the opportunity of going to America, better weather, training every day, um, and potentially coming out debt-free, which is what I did. It just seemed an absolute no-brainer for me. It's something that I wanted to do straight away, and it's not for everyone, don't get me wrong. Um, some people wouldn't want the thought of being away from home, although I would say the time goes so quickly. Like I literally remember like yesterday meeting Ellie for the first time, and now here she is graduated and working with us. So it can go super quick. Also, because I was injured all the time, I was an academy coach there, got my B license. Um, out in the States, as you can see from them stats, that the goalkeepers weren't great in our conference, but I did fairly well, 61 and 69. After my first year, I did quite well. I won, um, started winning awards and honours. Other universities were interested in me. So my score, as I said at the beginning, was around $40,000 a year. I was covered 32000 from academic and athletic scholarship. I actually got half of my scholarship paid just because I'm an international. Um, so again, it shows how the variances can be. But other universities were interested. Now, tried to get in touch with the, uh, the company that I'd been through. They wanted more money to re to, for me to get help to move schools. So I said, I'll do it myself. Give me the highlight footage. Oh, we're going to have to buy that because that's our property. So basically, my experience of it was really negative. Um, and in the end, I did end up staying at the same school for four years, which was absolutely fine. I did thoroughly enjoy it. I lived in downtown Chicago. Um, there was 10 English guys um, on our team, at least, for the every season while we were out there. Illinois Institute of Technology is one of the top 100 universities in America. Um, so for me, it ticked a lot of the boxes with an unbelievable experience. Um, yeah, twice awarded um, All-American of the Year for the entire country. Never got to the playoffs or regionals or anything, which Ellie did, but she can gloat about that a bit later on. Um, but yeah, it was an unbelievable experience for me. Somebody who'd always just thought I want to be a footballer to then get a degree. And actually, I've gone on to get my master's degree as well. is just completely mind blowing. If I was to be talking to myself at 16, who half heartedly did a BTEC while I was doing my scholarship. But in hindsight, I would have never been able to go to America had I not done that because it meant I was still in education. So 
as I say to all our athletes, you're a student athlete and the student part become, you know, it comes first for a reason because without it, it, it doesn't give you this opportunity. Um, let me just, that's enough about me. Um, here's a bit about our key leadership. Obviously, Ellie's going to talk a little bit later on about herself heading up the women's soccer, but also her experiences. And the key thing for us is we we were US soccer scholarships, but introduced new sports and changed the name. But we wanted people on board that had actually done scholarships themselves and been out to America and played. So hence bringing on Andy and Brett, who have international experience um, playing their sports as well. Um, obviously, Danny Laws, a lot of you who are local will know Danny, but he obviously heads up our partnership at Sudbury 2, which is where the trial game's at tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, just kind of a few key ones there. Also worth mentioning, we've got people working for us out in America. So as much as I love to hear from my athletes at two in the morning, um, I would prefer if you contacted your American representative at that point. And the reason why it can be quite key is because say, for example, you're not getting on with your coach, you might not want to share that with one of your teammates even, especially when scholarship comes into play and somebody in the American system um, is going to know it just as well as we do as well. So we are there for our athletes for the whole four years or however long they are beyond that. Um, in America as well. Again, won't bore you too much about our partners. We've talked in depth about the different divisions. We work with a lot of professional clubs as well. So we are, you know, we've worked with New York Red Bulls, Chicago Fire, Minnesota. Um, one of the key things for Sudbury was when they did the New York tour, we were able to get them tickets to go watch New York Red Bulls. So there's perks like that. A few of our players have trialed at um, New York Red Bulls as well. None have got contracts there, but again, it just kind of highlights how there are opportunities out in the States. Um, the only other ones worth mentioning locally, obviously, because a few will be there tomorrow, is Lower Stockton Football Industry College. Um, we'll have a presence tomorrow at the trial game. And then, as you know, the, the trial is at AFC Sudbury. So both have got really good um, development programmes, which leads really well into the America process because they're balancing football and education, um, which leads really well into the American system. Uh, for those of you that are local as well, we work with pro clubs. I've just put the local ones there, but we, you know, we are partnered with Ipswich Town, Colchester, uh, Norwich, Cambridge. Um, so we've got a very strong presence in this region as well. Um, we also do tours each year. So we've got a partner called Global Image Sports, which is the football one there. Um, so we'll be looking to do our own tour next year. As you can imagine, there's not been many tour activities this year. Um, but as soon as um, normality is restored and we're able to, we will be holding them. Okay, so say for example, tomorrow goes really well and we think that you're a good potential student athlete for America and you're, you've decided you want to go ahead with the process. We essentially have two packages. Um, this premier athlete package, which I'm now about to talk with, is the one that we've had from day one. Um, and the whole point of it was to make sure that athletes didn't have the experience that I did, where you're kind of left to your own devices to have to figure out the process for yourselves. We are there for athletes from day one when they sign to when they graduate and beyond. And obviously Ellie's living testament of that. Um, there's a lot of different icons on this um, slide here, but to go through really quickly, either yourself or your son has filled in um, the eligibility assessment um, on our website and has been approved. So hence why you've been invited to the trial game. Um, we also hold a showcase game once a year where American coaches come over. We did the last one at Sudbury actually in December and played against Colchester United. Um, and a lot of coaches watch online, but also because a lot of coaches and assistant coaches are internationals or from the UK, they fly home for Christmas. So it's a great opportunity for them to come and watch our players in person. As I said, if you do decide to go ahead with it, whether it's myself or for female soccer, it might be Ellie or one of our colleagues would be your designated rep. At that point, as I said, we'll have a shared WhatsApp group so we can have weekly touch points. You also then get access to our website, which I'm going to get to next. In fact, let me just skip ahead on that. Um, so you have a profile on our coaches database, which is what you're seeing a screenshot of here. So coaches can come on and search by sport, gender, position, what you want to study. When they click on that here, they open up your profile. That's where we've got your highlight videos. And even though, as I said, we've got close relationships with you know thousands of schools out in America is that it's still important for you to have good video footage because for those coaches that can't necessarily come over and watch you play in person they're going to be judging you based on that so it's important that it's right and also it's important why we don't just judge you on tomorrow and only use that footage that we come and you know film you in your own environment too to make sure 
that that showcases your talent in the best possible light. Now, beyond the highlight videos as well, you'd have all the information that you provide in terms of your background, athletics, academics. Again, going back to my negative experience was that I also had how much I could afford towards cost each year. Um, and no surprise, it was actually, I think, seven or $8,000 a year, and that was what I was ended up paying. But all the offers that came in left me with pretty much that cost for the ones that could or not better, because why would you, you know, if you, can, if you know Ellie can afford X amount, why would you offer her better than that? So the way that we operate is we never disclose how much a, a family or a player can afford towards to contribute to the costs. Uh, we go to bat as if you can afford essentially nothing. Um, and obviously that adds more negotiations, more communication. But if we can help save an athlete two, three, four, five thousand dollars a year over four years, you just save 20,000 just by having those additional touch points with coaches. Um, some coaches will want to reach out directly to our athletes, which is absolutely fine. Some will just want to go through us to first and foremost get our opinion on that athlete. For those that go through the athletes, we would get them to notify us or forward the email on. Then on that joint spreadsheet is where we'd be able to say, for example, Ellie goes, you know, Coach Strother from Itawamba has contacted me. I'd add that information, but also put in the location, how many internationals they've got, what the roster size is, um, what their record, what the scholarship could be, and any notes or recommendations that we've got in that school so that you're not in the position I was where you're like, oh, wow, there's 30 schools, but I don't know which one's good for academics, which one's good for football, what the divisions mean. We can break that down and have conversations with you so that you're not wasting a coach's time or your own talking to a school that isn't a good fit for you academically, athletically, or financially. Um, so. Then if I just quickly scroll forward to the athletes area we've got here. So all of our athletes can log into our athletes area. Um, and as you can see at the left, it basically gives you various tools to help you through the process as well as having a designated rep. So the Browse University database, which I'll get to shortly, has got thousands of universities on that gives scholarships. So you could search D1 schools, you can find the school you want, click on it, go through. Um, in fact, yeah, so here's actually an overview of the search, similar to kind of the coaches database. You can click on that school and then go through and you can, I'll get to it later, you can watch a campus video, you can learn more about the school, you can contact coaches directly. So that's all included within that. Um, and then, as I said, there's like a checklist on there that says from day one, this is what you need to get done before graduating. And then if it's the entrance exam, for example, as you can see here, click on that and it gives you practice videos, practice exams. You can also contact our tutor for private tuition. So the whole point of the athletes area is to take you hand by hand from day one through to not only going out to America, but also graduation as well as having your designated rep. Okay, so let me just go back. Um, highlight video we talked about, as I said, hopefully we'll be able to get some decent clips from tomorrow and finger Fingers crossed it doesn't rain. It's just stopped here now. I was saying to Ellie before that it's predicted not to rain between 9 and 11, which would be brilliant. Um, SAT, we just talked about the support that we can provide. Same with eligibility centres. So if you were looking to go to a four-year school, NCAA or NAIA, you need to get cleared by their eligibility centre. So again, we provide all the support on their resources to make sure that you get cleared because Again, ironically, I actually didn't get cleared by the NCAA eligibility center because they deemed me to be a professional, even though I hadn't been. So you need to be careful about what you disclose in terms of if you've been paid or got expenses for playing. And then the best way to think of us is as a, as a football agent, essentially, because we are you know, negotiating and talking with schools to find and get you the best possible deal. Um, more and more frequent up until COVID was that athletes would also maybe fly out to America once they've shortlisted two, three, four schools, visit those schools in person and then make a decision. Again, we can help facilitate that. Won't pay for your flight, unfortunately. But again, there's quite a lot that goes into doing those official visits so we can help. And then... After all of that, if you decide on your school and you commit to the school, it's then the same as if you went to the UK uh, uni anyway. So like same as the UK, you need to get cleared by admission so that then you can get given your visa documentation so you can get your visa. Um, and then we can also provide support with insurance. Um, I always use this story about a guy on our team thought that he wouldn't get insurance and he also decided which two bad decisions here, not getting insurance and then doing a backflip off the side of our house into snow and breaking his leg uh, to impress some American girls. 
it ended up costing him eighteen thousand dollars in surgery fees so do not be that guy do get insurance make sure you're covered they haven't got the national health system so you need to make sure you are covered but again we can help with that and then as i said the big thing once you're out there is to make sure that you're happy for the whole time and Matt, for example, who's gone on to be, to be drafted, he actually did three years at a school. And then in his last year, he decided, I want to give myself the best possible shot of getting drafted. So I want to move schools. So we helped move him to Missouri State. And I don't think without that move, he would have got picked up. So again, whether it's because you want a different challenge, touch wood, it's never because you're not happy. We are there to you know, help you for your whole time in America. And we can do that as part of it. I wish I'd have had that because I was looking to transfer and never got that support. Um, in terms of our fees, we offer payment plans. And as, as hopefully you've got from the last 20, 30 minutes is that ongoing support is absolutely massive for us. Um, okay, gone through that. So as well as the Premier Athlete Package, we've also got an onli online athlete package. So maybe for athletes that don't get offered one of the 25 places on our programme, um, you can sign up, as I said, talking a little bit earlier, to our online platform where you get access to the university database. So you can still research schools yourself. You can still contact coaches directly. Although, as you can imagine, that's difficult because coaches do get contacted by thousands of athletes every single month, as well as organisations like us who have relationships with them. Um, and also, we would create your profile that coaches can access the same as we would a Premier Athlete too. However, all the other things that I mentioned there in terms of four years support, guiding you through the process, you don't get with that. I can talk about pricing on that a little bit later as well. So obviously you've got the internet nowadays. You could go out and research and contact coaches using our online platform. Why use a company like us? Hopefully I've already kind of highlighted the reasons why you would. Um, as I said, we only offer 25 sports specific gender places on our program each year to ensure that our athletes have the best possible chance of getting the best scholarship out in America. I've already told you about how long we've been going. We've got 100% athlete placement success rate on those that have looked to go out to America and commit to it. Secured over $20 million in scholarship in that time. Something that we often get is the term full scholarship. Um, some of you will have heard of that. What that means is when you have the cost of tuition, food and housing covered. A lot of other companies may tell you, sign up for America, live the American dream and have a full scholarship. Yeah, that sounds great. Two things to that. We've already discussed earlier how competitive it is for places. So, for example, I did a scholarship at Ipswich, straight A student. I didn't go to a school on a full scholarship. However, I did get full scholarship offers, but they just weren't the right school for me either in the middle of nowhere, bad academics, bad football team. It depends what you want to get out of that experience. Now, I was willing to work on campus and contribute a bit towards my costs because I liked the idea of living in downtown Chicago, being on a team that was winning the conference, being at a uni that's one of the best in the country. For me, that was the experience I wanted. Everyone is different. However, it's just to let you know that there probably will be costs um, in terms of contributing towards the university. So we want to be transparent about that. But again, that's why it's about finding the right school for you athletically, academically and financially. Um, we talked about trial games. Obviously, we're going to see you tomorrow. The Athletes Area and University Database is, I know it's a big word, but it's pretty revolutionary um, in terms of what's out there with other companies. Um, so, yeah, it's a massive asset to being one of our athletes. And as I said, as a premier athlete, you get four years support and beyond. Guarantees, how fun. So, as I said, this all sounds amazing. You can live in America, you can be the next Ellie or Matt Bentley and go on to you know, live the American dream, come out debt free, what an opportunity. Unfortunately, we cannot guarantee amount of offers, percentages, those full scholarships that we just talked about, or even the location of offers. However, because we're selective, experience, provide that personal support, we can guarantee you that we will pretty much, you know, we will give you the best service in the industry, but also the best opportunity of getting all those things you want. So optimal profile circulation, player support is going to lead to you getting the best offers out there. What can you do? This all sounds great. And obviously we're there to help you, but you've also got to understand there's a lot on you or your son um, or daughter with this process in order to maximize it. So, what level of support you choose. Obviously, if you're offered a place on the Premier Athlete but choose to do the online or do it yourself, that's completely up to you. What you've got in your academics and what you get, maybe your results come in, again, that's all been down to you. 
how you play tomorrow even or when we film you is again up to you or not totally up to you but obviously it's the contributing factor and then entrance exam we can provide you all the tools in the world but it's you that's got to sit the exam too it's you that's going to have the conversations with the coaches once we start filtering it down to ones we're interested in um, and ultimately it's your preferences i wanted to live in chicago ellie wanted to live in west virginia you know other players want to live in new york others want to live in nebraska you know everyone's completely different and it's about the experience that you want to get out of it again not going to spend too much time on this because this can be a bit misleading but this is a really rough talent matrix on where the gauges are and it kind of actually contradicts what i said about d1 not necessarily being better than nai but if you're looking to play for example the top level in each of these you know different regulatory bodies um then this is like a rough guideline on what type of background you'd need the key point here is if, if you've like never played for a team don't expect to be playing and getting offers from ncaa d1 programs you know they are going to be recruiting because they've got bigger budgets and rosters the top players from the top programs not in the uk but internationally as well um, but again we can talk about that tomorrow as you can see here, we have worked with and placed, you know, literally hundreds of athletes at top universities in all the regulatory bodies and divisions. I wouldn't expect anyone to know who these logos for school teams are. But again, it almost highlights what how I felt going into the process of being contacted by schools I'd never heard of. I can assure you that all of these are the top programs within each of these divisions. But again, it's a bit of a minefield. Um, and the main thing is that we're there to guide you to make sure you do end up at one of the right schools. At that point, I've definitely talked too much, um, and Ellie's probably bored of hearing it as well, is that Ellie is also one of our original Hall of Fame inductees. Now, to be one of our Hall of Famers, you need to have excelled both academically and athletically, and we only choose one athlete per year. So. Ellie is our Hall of Famer from 2015, um, and I'm actually not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to pass you on to Ellie, who is going to talk to you a bit about her background um, and, yeah, and her role, and then we'll carry on from there. So I'll hand it over to you, Ellie. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously, um, I went out, did four years um, in West Virginia, actually. I did all four years at the same place, so I didn't transfer either just because I to be honest I was just so happy there that there was I didn't really feel the need to leave at all but I'd probably do another four years if you'd let me yeah, no need to leave um, I switched from when I was seven all the way up um, and then I did a couple of years at Cambridge and then went back to play uh, first team for sort of just about a year before deciding to go out to America so I was doing my A-levels at the time and a bit like um, a bit like Liam was saying, I was doing that, probably wasn't going to go to uni in, America, in, in England, wasn't really sure what I was going to do next to be honest, I just kind of did A-levels because it was the next thing to do after GCSEs and it just kind of delayed making any decisions and then yeah I'd had it in the back of my head you know since I was tiny to want to go and then yeah I got a presentation from Liam actually and straight away was just like yep yeah, that's, that's me. Um, so yeah, uh, signed on with what was at the time US soccer scholarships. Um, Liam came, filmed my games, helped me circulate, basically just walked me through the whole process, which was, yeah, it was an overwhelming time, but I felt I got really good service in terms of, I felt quite needy at the time. So I just had so many questions, but there was never, you know, a stupid question or it was never too much. So yeah, walked me through the whole process and then, yeah, I went out, completed four years, um, had yeah, a really good time out there. I mean, I think I might have had 64 starts. So I was pretty much regularly starting in all four years, which was a really big deal for me as well. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to go out and maybe not play as much, which was a big kind of thing within my choice. But the coaches that I spoke to, because I spoke to so many schools before going out to pick the right one, that he sort of assured me that he really, he really wanted me to come and stuff. And I think that was important for me. Um, and I managed to, yeah, come out with, uh, a good good grades and a degree and I'm now doing my master's as well which I never thought I would ever be doing but somehow we're pulling through and um, playing back playing back at Ipswich I've kind of full circled and yeah debt free so <laughs> <laughs> awesome thanks for the insight there and, and obviously Ellie made a really good point there about playing um, 
again, a lot of people think underestimate the standard of play both in men's and women's soccer, and maybe not women's soccer because it's been huge out there for so long and so popular. But I think people not only think, oh, I'm going to go to the top program, but also assume I'm going to go in and start straight away. And, you know, it's a really big thing to go out and, you know, be starting in your freshman season. So to do that solidly for four years is, is an amazing achievement. But particularly, I know we've got a few goalkeepers coming tomorrow, but it's a big consideration in that if I go to a team and they've got two senior goalkeepers, you're not going to play year one. It's just not going to happen, even if you're Courtois. Uh, or because I don't know who, who's actually good anymore I don't know they're all making mistakes yeah maybe Allison or um who's the yeah we'll say Allison but um they've only got one year left to play so if the coach doesn't play them that year they're never going to play again so take things like that into consideration so like again at my school NAIA we only had two keepers so like once one graduated the next one's coming in you know you've got a pretty decent opportunity to start obviously for outfield you've got more chance because even if they've got a really good right midfield or if you're a winger you might be able to play left midfield or attacking midfield so but these type of things are really important to consider um, and as you can see with how Ellie done like getting a 3.9 GPA almost perfect ace for four years is um, you know you've got to apply yourself and it's opened up doors for her to do a master's degree as well so as with anything in life, again, it's about taking these opportunities and making the most of it. Um, and Ellie's definitely done that. So again, any questions that you've got for myself or Ellie, we've both been there and done that. I did get a 4.0 GPA. I had, to, I had to, I don't even think I mentioned it, but I had to drop it in there. But I did get perfect A's for four years. But again, I would not have believed, I, did, I don't even think I got a distinction on BTEC. Like I wasn't about academics at all, but this literally has changed my life. Um, I've gone on to get my master's degree as well and obviously running my own business. So for me, it's an absolute life changer. Okay, so we've already talked about Matt a little bit early on, but I just thought this would be good to include because I can send it to you later. But again, just look at Matt, like released by Colchester, didn't even get a scholarship, um, went to West Virginia, did really well for three years, but it was too easy for him. He was, it's actually the opposite. He felt that even if I played badly, I'm still going to start. Um, he didn't think the team was quite at his level come year three because he'd developed so much himself. As you can see, he got 14 goals in 12 games playing for midfield, which is just outrageous. Um, and no surprise that he then got, we, we got him a move to Missouri State. And then last year, got 20 goals in 20 games. It's just an like unbelievable stat. So no wonder he got drafted into Major League Soccer. But he's made his own future by working hard for four years. You know, Matt wouldn't have even gotten the Missouri State team year one, let alone be the, the best player by an absolute mile. So, and again, you just got to look at his grades again, 3.9 GPA, like all our athletes are excelling at academically, you know, almost perfect A's for four years. So we're all about you making sure that, yes, love your time in America, enjoy the sun, the beaches, the opportunity to travel, play in football every day. That's amazing. But also remember what you're there for. And first and foremost, you're there to get a degree. So um, hopefully you got that from the presentation tonight. Is It's easy to sell the dream of playing football in America for years in like Florida. Yeah, that's not difficult. What is important to remember is the reality of it. What are you there for? And what are the key benefits of this process? Well, it's the opportunity to get a degree at a reduced cost, potentially free. Um, debt free at the end of it if you're like Matt and you want to make it as a pro and you want to look down that route as well then that's just an added bonus okay you will be happy to know we are now in the FAQ so hopefully you've got a better idea of how the process works also how we help our athletes I'll quickly run through these and then open it up to everyone um, who's got questions anyone who's come into a trial game is eligible or we wouldn't invite you there because you need to make sure you're academically eligible now the bit that's the question mark for the trials is how do you perform athletically um, within the trial game environment as well, which obviously we'll find out. Um, highlight videos, that's for us to worry about. But after the trial game, we'll know, you know, we should have some decent clips and then we can look to add to that. Can you take a gap year? Now, that's, this has never been a more relevant question than right now. Yes, you can. So if you're worried about the travel situation or you're thinking of deferring for a year, you can do that. I actually did take a gap year. Um, Ellie, you didn't, did you? You went straight from, yeah, Suffolk, uh, Suffolk 1 to yeah. Ghana, America. Um, you can take a gap year. So you could finish 
your college course next May um, or whenever it is and then look to have 12 months out and then look to go the following August so that's an option for you as well and even if you sign up to the process you could see what offers you get for year one and if there's a good fit for you then amazing and if not we can look to go for the, the second year as well so there are two opportunities there as we've already talked way too much about entrance exams but just know that if you want to go to a four-year school you need to take it and pass it and we can provide all the resources and support you need what do you need to study at in america a lot of athletes come into this process thinking i'm on a sports scholarship i need to study sports science or sports management no i did a business degree ellie did a psychology degree um, you can do engineering maths english whatever you want to do um, you can take as long as the university that you're looking to go to offers it, which seems self-explanatory, but it's worth highlighting. But if you come to me and go, I want to do a physiotherapist degree, um, just know that there's like four universities in the whole of America that offer something so niche. So therefore, naturally, you're going to reduce your chances of finding a school that can make it work for you athletically, academically and financially. Um, but if you're doing something very generic, like I did business, then pretty much every university is going to offer it. Ideal time to apply. So it's actually like a year and a half to two years in advance. And the reason being is what I talked about at the start of the presentation. Earlier you sign, more scholarships available, more opportunity to you know, catch the eye of coaches before they commit that scholarship elsewhere. But also, as you can imagine, the earlier you sign, the more service you're getting out of us as well. Um, if you're worrying and thinking, well, I'm looking to go out in August and it's now, the end, as in August next year, we're now going in September, do not worry, we do sign players up until December, so you've still got time. Um, and for our female athletes, obviously we've got a trial game in October um, at University of Essex, um, and Ellie will be actually playing in that one. I don't know mm -hmm. if I told you that, but you are. Um, what determines how much scholarship you get? Again, we've already covered it. There's so many different factors, but you've got academic and athletic opportunities. As I said, I got 50% just because I was an international student. Um, so it's not as straightforward as saying, look, Ellie, I've looked at your grades, I've looked at your footage, your playing history, you're going to get X amount of scholarship. As you can imagine, some schools are as cheap as 10,000, some are as expensive as 60, 70,000 without scholarship. So it can vary hugely. What other costs can you expect to incur? We talked about the entrance exams, which are around 100 pounds. You can take it more than once. Who, I would say who would want to, but we've already discussed why that can be beneficial. Eligibility centres around £100 for each. Um, you might want to register for NCAA and NAIA because, again, it can just help quicken up the process so that if I'm circulating your video and you don't know if you're going to go to an NCAA or an NAIA school, um, you're covered for both. Um, flights, obviously, how often you come home. Um, most athletes come home at Christmas, uh, which makes sense. I came home for the summer, year one, and all my mates were either at work or at uni, and the weather was like it is tonight, raining. So for the other three years, I decided to stay out in Chicago, 30 plus degree weather, got really fit, also worked 40 plus hours a week. So I was able to save up more money to reduce my costs further. Um, health insurance, we talked about, it, but we won't talk about it too much right now. Um, and then obviously your visa. On a more positive note, there are ways to make money while you're out in America, which is great. Now, you have a student visa, which means you are able to work on campus. Now, I had a variety of jobs while I was out there, um, but I use work loosely because I didn't, you don't really work very hard, but you still get paid, which is great. I worked in the gym. Um, I worked helping my coach, like pumping up balls, doing laundry, marking the pitch, whatever it is, I would do it. Um, you can work in the cafeteria, the library as a resident assistant. There are opportunities to make money. Now, don't get me wrong, you're not going to become a millionaire from working on campus. Um, however, say you're earning three to five thousand dollars a year, all of a sudden that covers some of your tuition, flight, some of your social spending. So it can be a real difference because if you're deciding between two schools and one can say, look, we can pretty much guarantee you work while you're out there then that might contribute three, 4,000 that you wouldn't have got elsewhere. Now, I was super lucky because in my fourth year, I was actually earning around $10,000 a year. So I was actually earning more than what my costs were. And again, this was all the main reason why I was able to come out of university debt-free. I was also doing things like coaching, cash in hand, playing indoor football during the off season. So as I said, it's about what you make of these opportunities. Um, and that meant that we could make it work financially as a family. I think this is the last slide. 
again which you'll be happy to know and really appreciate everyone for sticking with it because especially this late and the fact that you're gonna have to put up with me tomorrow but we are currently recruiting for 2021 obviously and also 2022 um i think at the women's one we've also got some for 2023 as you can see it's never really too early to start the process but um again people could change their mind on whether they want to do it everyone's already done the application um, we can have a free player consultation in person tomorrow um, so do let me know if you need to book that if not we can have a chat um, over the weekend or next week you will be attending the trial tomorrow um, you or someone you know will be which is great um, if you're successful um, following tomorrow's trial we would make a contractual offer to you to join the program and then again we can have a chat and if it's something you want to do we would want to start the process really quickly particularly for athletes looking to go out next year we need to get your highlight video from tomorrow and what else we need sorted ASAP and start circulating athletes. Now, usually for recruitment period, we are a little bit delayed because a lot of coaches were hesitant to make decisions on recruitment until they knew how this upcoming season looked like, which has now been decided. So we're now full steam ahead with you know pushing players and, and getting that recruitment done. Um, so it's not too late for you to sign. In fact, it wouldn't make too difference even if you'd signed a few months ago, just because there hasn't been that activity. Now, another plus for attending the trial tomorrow is you do get £100 off our Premier Athlete package. I said I would talk about it. So these are the prices. So for our Premier Athlete package, the standard fee is £2,250, which can be paid in instalments. That is a one-time fee. You're then covered for the whole time leading up to going out to America, but also four years and beyond while, while you're in America as well. As I said, that can be paid in instalments and there is like a pro rata refund. So if after 30 days you decide, actually, I don't want to do it, you know, you get a refund in that time period as well. Um, so as I said, for attending tomorrow's game, if you get offered a place, the fee would only be 2150 And again, for those that are listening that are one of our partner clubs, there may be a slightly discounted rate on that as well. For the online package, it's only 9 99 a month. You can sign up to that whenever. You can also come off that whenever. And even if you want to sign up to the online package now, and then you become a premier athlete, we can refund you the amount that you've paid for the online package. So again, there's a no risk situation with that too. You can then research schools and also even reach out to them if you want. Here's kind of the process from here on in. After tomorrow, if you do get offered a place, choose your package. As I said, profile creation immediately, get the highlights. You then need to pass that exam. So if you're looking to do a four year school and go out next year, I'd want you to probably register next week for the October exam. Although that does put a bit of pressure in terms of studying, if not the December one at the very latest. During that time, you need to get cleared by the eligibility centre and we will be circulating your profile to schools so that obviously we can start that negotiation process. Once you commit to school, you need to get cleared by admissions, then visa. So as you can see, time is very much of the essence. If you're looking to go next year or 2022, um, at that point, I'd like to thank you for your time as I already have um, and welcome any questions. I will stop sharing my screen so I can now look at any questions that we have received. Um, let me just, so I'll go to the chat here. So we had a, a question come in earlier from somebody who's already done a degree in the UK and is looking to do their post-grad. Are they still eligible? Yes, um, to, but there is a caveat to that, in that most players that do a four-year degree um, or a three-year degree before going out to America would typically just do a master's degree out in the States. So for example, you could do three-year degree in the UK, go out to America and have two years playing eligibility, um, and then you know finish, you could do a master's degree in that time, or you could even do a short condensed version of a master's in a year. So a lot of our athletes and even myself, I was tempted to become an assistant coach and get my master's degree paid for as well. Um, so yeah, that is an opportunity for you. So if you're looking post-grad and the and thing is a lot of coaches do like post-grad students because rather than recruiting an 18 year old player, you're recruiting, I don't know, a 24 year old player. So physically mature wise, you're going to bring a lot to the team beyond just your technical ability as well. Um, I shall. If anyone else has got any questions, just let me know. I was just going to quickly make sure everyone's unmuted and kind of open it up if you have got any questions, but also realize a lot of people might not want to um, 
ask questions in front of everyone but again that's the purpose of tomorrow so myself ellie any of my colleagues welcome to have a personal chat with you um after the game tomorrow and i know we've got some who are going to be at the women's trial in october the same thing applies if um if you do want that individual meeting tomorrow just drop me a message um I think I've given you all my mobile number, so feel free to WhatsApp me tonight. If not, email us back and I can schedule them in. Um, I'm hoping the fact that we haven't got any other questions means that I've covered everything that you wanted to hear and um, you feel confident with it and either that or you're bored and you're thinking, come on, it's eight o'clock on a Thursday. Um, but yeah, really big thanks to everyone for their time. Um, really enjoyed chatting to you. And obviously thanks Ellie for joining us. We will see you bright and early tomorrow. As a final reminder, 8.45. Um, at that point, we're going to take your temperature, register you, give you a shirt. We'll meet in the stadium, have a quick 10, 15 minute chat. And I apologise if I cover anything I've covered just now. Quick warm up with myself and Ellie, straight into the game, individual meetings afterwards. If you need to leave, no problem. We can always chat afterwards. Thanks everyone again. And I look forward to seeing you all in the morning. Bye-bye. Yeah.